just when I thought the worst was over, it wasn't. Ugh, the fight got so much worse. It was actually fascinating to watch Michael's behavior change. It was subtle, but still fascinating nonetheless. And we're gonna talk about it. But first, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Rocket Money. I freaking love them, and I'm gonna talk more about them later. Let's get into the fight first. So in the last episode, we saw the fight begin. And in this episode, it continues. Amy's crying, she's yelling, I'm leaving until you decide to be a better father. And Michael yells back, I can't do it when you're gone. And Amanda goes, uh, that's what being a father is. Taking care of your kids. Duh. Amanda tells Michael, give Amy her debit card. And Michael just won't do it. He keeps changing the subject and not answering the question. And instead, he wants to talk to her alone. Red flag. He probably wanted to talk to her alone to manipulate her. Although I do question whether or not he has the ability to even do that. But that's the first thing I thought of. Why else would he want to talk to her alone? It's so that he can calm her down and convince her to do what he wants. Well, thankfully, Amanda's a smart cookie and she's like, oh, hell no. You are not talking to Amy alone. So Michael walks on over to Amy. She's sitting on the floor, bawling her eyes out. I think it was in this moment that he realized, wow, things are escalating real fast and he isn't going to win this fight. It's too late. She even tells him, I want a divorce. And he's like, no, 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 no divorce. Don't divorce me. I'm letting you go. Go out with your family. Have a blast. Go out. Stay out for as long as you want. Just come home at the end of the night or whatever. I'm not. Am I getting mad? I'm letting yes, you go. No, I'm fight not. Every time. I, I'm letting you go. And Amy tells him, you usually never let me go. And I'm fed up with it. And he goes, forget about the past. So obviously this is a recurring thing. Like they've done this over and over. She wants to go somewhere without him. And he doesn't want her to go like leave the house, leave his sight. That's insane. That would drive anybody crazy. And now that I think about it, every single scene that Amy was in throughout the whole entire four seasons of the show, Michael was always there too. And let's be real, it's not like anybody really wanted him to be on camera. Like he doesn't really offer much, but he was always in the background. Like Tammy said, or was it Amanda? Someone said that. He's always in the background doing nothing but watching her. We all know by now that they filed for divorce. And now Amy has total control of her money and her finances. And I hope she's being real careful and keeping track of where all her money's going. Because we know our girl, she pays her bills. Her bills are paid. But it's also important to be saving to see where all your money's going. And this is why I highly recommend Rocket Money. Listen, I'm very passionate about personal finance. And one of my New Year's resolution is to keep educating myself and to stay on top of it. I actually started my financial freedom journey not too long ago because I was tired of not knowing where my hard earned money was going. I had zero in savings, but all I knew was I needed to do something about it. And Rocket Money was such a huge help, especially when I felt so overwhelmed, I didn't even know where to start. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that you need to save more and manage your money better. Now, one of my personal favorite features that I use the most on the app is the canceling unwanted subscriptions because I have so many and I'm probably going to have even more because let's be real, everything is turning into a subscription model. It's so satisfying to see every single one of my subscriptions in one app. And another feature that I cannot live without is, is a feature that helps you lower your bills. Just upload a picture or a screenshot of your bill and tap a few buttons and Rocket Money will negotiate your bills for you. Do not wait to start taking control of your finances. Start today. Join me on the financial freedom journey by clicking on the link below, or you can go to rocketmoney.com slash my thoughts. It's free to download. They offer a seven day free trial, so try it and let's be financially free together. While Michael's trying to calm Amy down, she's still crying. She's like, it just can't be me and you all the time. I need to interact with other people too. And holy crap, I did not know that it was that bad. 
I have to wonder, though, if that kind of dynamic of the relationship where Amy um, only stayed home and was with Michael 24-7, I wonder if that was so much easier for her before surgery because that's all she could do. You know, she didn't go out. She didn't have a social life. She didn't have kids. She just wanted to stay home. And I'm sure, like, Michael had to do a bunch of stuff for her. And that's what he liked. But now Amy has two kids. She's way more independent. She's going out, doing things, and he doesn't like that. So Michael probably didn't really change his ways. It was Amy who changed, and she didn't see the red flags before because that was just the lifestyle that she lived back then. But now she can see the red flags because he's not letting her go anywhere. He keeps saying, I don't want a divorce. I don't want a divorce. I'm giving you space. I'm letting you go with your sisters. But the issue is he's only letting her go because things have escalated to this point. Every single other time he did not let her go. Remember when Tam Tam called the Popo? Well, the Popo finally arrived to the house and Amanda went outside to explain the situation and the Popo walked in to find Amy crying on the floor. And Michael's telling her, you know, you can come back as late as you want, as long as you can come home. And then he turns around and sees a Popo and he's like, uh, here's your debit card. <laughs> he tells the Popo, oh, I, I already gave her the credit card. There's no problem here, officer. <laughs> Oh my god. So Amy grabs her boys and gets in the car with her sisters. Tammy offers her place for Amy and the boys to stay while Amy tries to figure out what she wants to do. And I thought it was incredible to see the roles reversed. Now that Tammy is healthier and in a much better place, she's able to be there for Amy and give her a shoulder to lean on. Also, when Amy said the boys deserve better, Tammy chimed in and said, you deserve better. These boys deserve you, better. You deserve better. We're seeing a completely different side of her. The nurturing side, the empathetic side, a side that a lot of people didn't think she had. She acknowledged everything Amy's done for her, and now it's her turn to take care of Amy. I don't think I'm strong enough to do this. You're not doing this on your own. Bitch, where the <laughs> am I? I'm right here by your side. For a long time, Amy supported me. Now that I'm home and able to, you know, take care of myself, I get to support her. Feels good. Isn't that beautiful? Like, talk about character growth. Who knew? I'm really enjoying watching their relationship and how they're both handling different challenges in their lives. I don't know if anybody else feels this way. At one point, Amy did say she tried to hold on to her marriage with Michael for as long as she could because she didn't have a dad growing up and she wanted to give her sons a dad growing up. And that, oh, that really, that was like a knife in the chest. I feel like she's so hard on herself and every single scene Amy is crying or breaking down, crying or breaking down, that poor girl. So Amanda comes over with some face masks to cheer Amy up. So they're all getting silly and they're chatting and Amy tells her sisters, I'm ready to get divorced. So then Tammy tells her, all right, you need to take the money out of your joint account and make your own account. Because remember, he doesn't work. I do think you ought to wipe out your account, get the money out, either open up a new one, just your name, or put it all in the safe. I don't know how the finances work when you're about to get a divorce. How do you split the money in the joint account? Any lawyers out there? Any divorce attorneys? Leave a comment below. I would love to know how that works. See, this is why a prenup is important. I'm looking at you, Jasmine. No, it's if not. If there a is a prenup, I'm not going to marry you. Tammy and Chris visit Dr. Smith, and he is so impressed by Tammy's weight loss. Not only that, she's got a big ass giant smile on her face, something that he's never seen. And she gets to tell him that she's married and her husband wants to get weight loss surgery and she would really like for Dr. Smith to do it. And he's like, I got you. I got your husband. I'm going to do whatever I can to help him. So Caleb and Dr. Smith have a virtual appointment. Dr. Smith asks him, how much do you weigh? He gets on the scale. It's 537. Now, Tammy left the rehab two weeks ago and he weighed 500 pounds. So in two weeks, he gained 37 pounds in 14 days. Now, when he said he was emotionally eating, he wasn't joking. That's rough. And you know what was so sad knowing that he's passed 
um, just in case you didn't know, Caleb has passed away. But on the show, he talked about all the things he wanted to do with Tammy once he left rehab. <laughs> oh, that was so sad. He was like, we want to travel. We want to live together and we want to start a family. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. So sad. I forgot to mention when Chris went to Dr. Smith with Tammy, he weighed in at 300 pounds and he has not lost enough weight to get the skin surgery that he wants because he needs to get down to 250 pounds. That's a lot of weight to lose, especially after after you've lost so much weight. It's that much harder, like a hundred times harder to lose more weight. Meanwhile, Amanda takes Amy to the bank and Amy's feeling really guilty and bad about taking money out of their joint account like without telling him. (laughs) But then again, most of the money in the account is hers. You know, she earned it and she's not going to be taking everything. She's going to leave a little bit of something for Michael so that he can just like, I don't know, not be broke. (laughs) So they walk in, the cameras aren't allowed. So we only hear the audio. And I thought they were going to tell us how much money was in the account. And I was kind of hoping because I was super curious because you know how Chantal and Pedro, they exposed uh, the balance in their checking account. It was like $250,000. And so I was hoping to hear Tammy's, but they didn't say it. But what we did hear was Amy withdrawing everything in her account except a thousand dollars. I need to withdraw a lot of money. Okay, we want to leave a thousand in this account. So I'm assuming she left that for Michael. It's a new day. Everyone except Amy goes to the gym to work out. And damn, I was impressed watching Tammy pull on those ropes. I couldn't go longer than maybe five seconds. Honestly, I really need to start working out. I really need to start exercising. Story of my life. I say this every single day. I say tomorrow, the new year. Okay. uh, Oh, next week after this weekend. I mean, that's just like my life motto tomorrow. (laughs) Towards the end, we see Tammy struggling emotionally a little bit. Um, I think she really misses Caleb. It's taking a toll on her not seeing her husband. And she loves the fact that she's able to help Amy and she loves her nephews. But she really misses her husband. She thought she would be in this new house with her new husband, you know, living and starting their lives together. But instead, her husband is still in rehab. And now she has her sister and the two kids and they're crying all the time. (laughs) Like poor Tammy. But, you know, like I said, she said she's happy to do it. It's just different. You know, she didn't expect it. She talks to Caleb on the phone and he gives her some bad news Unfortunately, he does not qualify for weight loss surgery, and when he does get qualified, he won't be able to get his trach out, which means he has to stay at the rehab center until he gets his trach out. Tammy's super disappointed, but she also doesn't want to be too harsh because she knows he's a very sensitive person. And I was like, where is all this emotional intelligence coming from? Like, that's so crazy. I almost feel like Tammy just had it all along. She just put up her wall because she was struggling so much with denial and her, you know, own insecurities and her demons that she just shut down. Wow. Talk about character growth. Unbelievable. I'm loving this season. I really am. I know some people think it's boring, but I've always been a fan of the Slayton sisters. So maybe that's why. But how are you guys enjoying this season or not enjoying this season? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.